this is, this is, this is. Welcome back to a brand new episode of the podcast. I'm your host. Great to be here. It is the year 2022. And today is Halloween. All Hallowed's ween. All Hallows ween. I don't know if I said that right. halloween Happy Halloween, you guys. Uh, Mondays. Don't you love it when Halloween's on a Monday? It's so annoying. Ah, oh, why can't it just be on a Friday night? Friday night, Saturday night when all the ghouls come out and the girls. Um, I hope you guys have a great Halloween tonight if you're listening as this comes out. If not, I hope you had a great Halloween. Um, you know, I'm, I'm heading out to a few parties. I'm recording this on a Saturday. Um, not the traditional parties, more just like I'm wearing a costume and I'm going to, am I wearing a costume? I don't know what I'm wearing yet. I've got a, I am um, a Harry Potter character, not actually Harry Potter, but with the family, I'm a Harry Potter character. I'm Professor, um, not Malfoy, but the other one, the one that's like, he's like the long black hair. See, I don't know. I Normally I would know. I can't remember his name, but that's me. That's me. You'll see pictures. Um, you'll probably see pictures before you even hear this podcast. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, I hope you guys uh, had a great weekend. Um, This week is the week. This week is the week. MXPAX Vinyl Shop is opening this Friday, November 4th. So excited. I'm going to be working the store myself. Be out there um, packaging vinyl. We're going to do a really, really, really overly good job taping the vinyl packages and making sure that they're very safe when we send them out. And just trying to get better and better and better. Um, we've got nine variants. And if you haven't heard already, I can't imagine you haven't heard. We've been releasing videos every day, a, a new variant video. Um, so people can kind of see the records up close. And we have nine variants, but it's life in general, three variants of that. There's a specialty, there's a solid, there's black vinyl. And Buffalo, same thing. Buffalo's got a whole new color palette of vinyl, three variants. Solid, specialty, black vinyl. And then last but not least, we did the Ever Passing Moment. It was sort of like this era of major labels. Um, Ever Passing Moment, and that's three variants as well. And same deal, you know, this bright blue, solid, and then uh, the heavy spatter is the specialty, and then the black variant. So that's all available this Friday, 10 a.m., PST, that's Pacific time, that's West Coast time where we're at here in Bremerton. We didn't want to get up too early. Um, (laughs) Now we just wanted to make sure things were were cool. Uh, PXPX, be looking in your email if you want more info on a pre-sale. Check your email soon. Probably not as soon as Monday, but soon. Um, And look in your spam folder. A lot of times the MXPX emails get thrown into the spam folder. Speaking of... uh, info getting thrown into the spam. I I know a lot of people find out about our shows through email. Um, And so if you if you're in the Chicago or Milwaukee area, anywhere in the Midwest where you could travel into Chicago, we're going to be there really soon. It's less than three weeks, maybe like two weeks out by now. Um, That's going to be Friday, November 18th in Chicago at the Chicago House of Blues. And then uh, Saturday, November 19th in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. What's up? How's it going, Rick? I'll, I'll edit this out. It's cool. Okay. I'm doing my podcast. Cool. Uh, <laughs> let's do this. So uh, all of the, uh, the vinyl will be at mxpx.com. The shows, you can get tickets at mxpx.com. But please, uh, we're going to pl- be playing the House of Blues in Chicago. And it's been so long since we've been there. We're really excited to be back. And same deal with the rave in Milwaukee. Milwaukee. We love it. Uh, okay, sorry about that, you guys. That was Rick, a uh, friend of mine, helps out around the studio a lot. Um, now and again, we, we capture him on video. He is a real person, but uh, a lot of people would say, I don't know if he's real. I don't know if he exists. That's Rick, Rickman. Um, so back to back to us, back to me. I'm kidding. Um, am I? I don't know. MXPX.com, you guys. Um merchandise there may or may not be some fresh merchandise in the store 
early, dropping early, maybe just dropping without any fanfare into the store um, right around the van, the time we, we put out this vinyl. Um, we do realize not everybody loves vinyl. There's a few people that just, they're allergic to it. I don't know what it is. Uh, those people are crazy, but I respect you. You do you. And for those people, we will be dropping some new items, some items that were previously unavailable uh, in the store. So thank you guys. I appreciate it. Let me know, of course, uh, let me know how you're feeling about life. You can always call me. Call me right here on the podcast. The number is 360-830-6660. So leave me a voicemail. Let me know how life is going. Let me know how you, what you think about the new song, Unstoppable. Uh, we covered a band called The Planet Smashers, and that's one of my favorite songs that they do. And we've been ta- I've been talking about it on the podcast. So uh, if you've been listening to the podcast, you know all about it. But here we are, uh, finally out. Thank you, thank you, thank you for listening. I appreciate it. I think people really dug it. You know, a lot of people didn't know if it was a, a new song or if it was a, a cover. But I don't think it really matters. It's, it's new from MXPX. And um, no, it's not going to be on the next, you know, new album that we're working on. But, um, you know, we wanted to give a little. We, we honestly wanted to have it out a little earlier than it came out, but we just weren't ready, straight up, I'll be honest. But um, everything else is right on schedule. Vinyl's more than on schedule. We've been planning that for a while, and um, we might have something coming up soon for Christmas as well. Stay tuned, check your emails if you're in the PXPX, that's the fan club. Um, It's very, 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 you know, I don't wanna sell or anything, but people sometimes just join the fan club just so that they can get, get pre-orders on vinyl and stuff like that. So you do you. I appreciate you guys. Um, and I, and I appreciate all the support that, you know, I don't take it lightly. Don't want to take it for granted. Um, it's a pleasure to be here doing, doing this creative work that, that we do. And it is a lot of work. I've made so many videos. It's insane. It's insane. If you guys haven't seen the variant videos up online, please go check out MXPX YouTube or Inst- it's really everywhere. Instagram, whatever you, you look on, go check out MXPXPX on Instagram or MXPX on Twitter. And uh, say hi to us on Facebook if you're on Facebook. We'd love to hear from you. Um, yeah, you know, get back into our lives. We'd love, we'd love to see you. All right, let's get to some voicemails, you guys. Before we get to voicemails per se, I wanted to read a screenshot I took off of, uh, I think this is off Instagram, um, on the Facebook Instagram, so Mike Herrera podcast. Um, let me say, it's I don't, I don't know why I'm here, 379. He goes, I got a question, maybe for your podcast, and here we are. How do you see your responsibility today And can you relate to it, especially now that you're dad and have quite a lot of responsibilities? Now, that's a great question because, I mean, you know, you you always wonder why people, um, not why people, I I always wonder how people that I look up to, you know, deal with problems in their lives. Not saying children are a problem, but it's a a good problem to have. digging my grave. Um, You know, how do I deal with the responsibilities? How do I, how does that change? How does that change, right? Like, how do I see my responsibility today? Now, when I wrote that song, it was a joke. I mean, I wasn't trying to, to not have responsibility. Maybe I was. Um, But now that I'm a dad, honestly, I, I get more anxiety. I wouldn't say that I get anxiety like real bad or anything, but like I never really got anxious at all um, when I was a kid. And then as soon as I had Sailor, not high, I mean, my, my wife had Sailor, our first kid. Um, she, everything was great, no, no problems. But like, and then when I started traveling outside uh, the country, I would just be like so far away from that, which is really weird. So like now I'm good, uh, but it was just like something that happened on a tour right when when I was a new dad. And so I, what what that signaled to me was, okay, take this seriously. Take 
now you're responsible for more than just yourself. And, uh, you know, to be honest, I always was, you know, but, but there's that word responsible, responsible. And when you're in a band that's successful more than, I mean, there's a lot of different success, you know, levels, of course, but I feel like we're successful as a band. And, and because of that, we have people that we employ, crew members, team members that don't tour, people that work uh, the web, you know, the merch store and, and people that work on, on all the things like artists and, and printers and, and, you know, there's infrastructure around the business part of it, you know. And when you become, the, the bigger you get, the bigger, the more responsibility you have to more people. And that can be very stressful and very so it's it's similar to being a dad to be honest it's like your family grows and your stress grows and and the the more kids you have usually the more it costs the you know the cost of living goes up each kid you have now i think there's a a point where it doesn't really make a difference you know but <laughs> but like from 1 to 2 it's it's uh it's not crazy different but it is it's not double but it is different and I think two to three is probably probably way up, to be honest. Like, I have two kids, and um, I always think to myself, oh, my gosh, I'm so glad that we don't have an extra kid because then one kid would be sitting on the plane alone, whereas here I'm alone. Or, you know, like the two kids can go with the mom, and I, I can be, you know, with the dog, that kind of thing. Dad just sitting over there in the corner with the dog. So um, I am go going off on a little bit of a tangent, but um, back to the responsibility. That song, it was a f that song was was and is more of a feeling. It's a feeling that um, it's not meant to be taken literally, but it is a feeling that is meant to be lived in. You know, and there's nothing wrong with living that that attitude that that vibe whatever that is that responsibility vibe what's that right um okay i'll move on <laughs> here we go let's get into voicemails thanks for sending in your voicemails one more time and the number is 360-830-6660 please call in leave me a voicemail tell me ask me a question about music about life about responsibility whatever it is about the new music that we're working on about un unstoppable or anything you want uh shows i love it all and, and it could be you have a question about your relationship or your situation i'm not a licensed therapist but i'll give it a shot all right here we go hey mike this is lou from new jersey uh i don't really have a question it's more of a, a little bit of a story okay back in oh five or oh six i probably should have looked this up before but <laughs> too late now here we are you guys played a festival we used to have a, a festival here in new jersey called surf and skate it was down in asbury park i mm -hmm. think it eventually became bamboozle but that doesn't matter it was surf and skate at the time i want to say it was maybe like oh five or oh six and uh one of the kids in the youth group that i was with uh one of the younger guys he was a big mxpx fan and i, I am too me and and you know a couple of the other older guys so uh his mom had got tickets and asked if we could take him. We were like, yeah, absolutely. So took him down there. And, um, yeah, you know, it was a great lineup. It was uh, you guys, Less Than Jake, Yellow Card. I think Good Riddance may have been there. Maybe Goldfinger. Uh, I think I may be making Goldfinger up. But definitely Good Riddance, Less Than Jake, you guys, Yellow Card. Again, none of this matters. I'm sorry. Um, you guys played great. It, we, you were the band that we were all there to see. And uh, you guys were amazing. You know, it's just a great show. And, uh, but the story really is on the way back. Um, if anybody knows New Jersey, we were going back up to Garden State Parkway North and we stopped at the first rest stop and we went to grab like Burger King or whatever before we went back home. And you guys were either going in or coming out of the men's room, probably, you know, just hit the bathroom before you hit the road, you know, on the bus. And I tapped the, the dude, his name was Enrique, and I tapped him on the shoulder. I was like, hey, man. And he was like, whoa, Mike Herrera. And he ran up to you. And, dude, you couldn't have been cooler. I think you gave him, like, a fan club sticker. It was the, the three skulls, the hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil skull heads. 
You gave him a fan club sticker. You signed it for him. I mean, this was like pre-smartphone, so we didn't take, you know, no pictures or anything like that. But, Mm -hmm. dude, you could not have been cooler to him, and you made his night. And me as well, being a lifelong fan. I've been a fan of you guys since uh, life in general. So to see how cool you were, it really spoke to your character back then and still now, man. And uh, I thank you for that. You really made that dude's night. And I'll never forget that. I mean, you're talking, that was like over 10 years ago at this point. But. Thanks so much, man. Thanks for your music. Really appreciate everything, and I uh, can't wait to see you on tour. Hopefully get back to the, uh, New Jersey New York. Have a great night, Mike. Thanks. Thanks, Lou. Thanks for the call, man. Yeah, I love, uh, love touring through there. I, of course, remember that exact moment. Actually, no, I don't. <laughs> but Skate and Surf, I remember, and Bamboozle, I remember. I wonder which one it was. If it was, I know we did both. We did Surf and Skate and... I honestly don't remember the lineup. I just remember the band that was on right before us. And we were in this like big dark room um, in it, not Atlantic City. Um, maybe. Anyway, I, that's not as important. What's, what's important is, is we're in this big room and the band that went on before us was the early November. And I had never seen them play. And they were, they're, you know, they're pretty, they were pretty big for a while. And, and, they do pretty well, um, or still probably. I mean, I'm sure they've done a reunion tour recently. But uh, anyway, um, I think, actually, I know one of the guys from that band, uh, and he's super nice guy, super nice guy. Anyway, I remember that. I remember seeing them play and being like, yeah, these guys, these these kids are, like, rocking out. It's cool. Um, and they, they have some really mellow parts to their songs, too. One, one thing I want to mention uh, before we move on, Lou, is I always wanted a friend named Enrique. <laughs> that's, just, that's, just a good, that's just a good name for a friend. So my friend Enrique. All right. I don't know why. Why? I just, that's just a cool sounding name. Um, yeah, thanks. Thanks, man. Uh, I'm glad you, I'm glad I wasn't a jerk. That's what I'm glad about. All right, let's move on. Hey, Mike, this is uh, Stones again. I uh, just watched your latest podcast, which sounds kind of weird. Um, but uh, you mentioned about needing more phone calls from, uh, mm-hmm. from listeners. So I thought I'd follow up from uh, another question that I have in regards to merch and memorabilia and stuff. I was the one that you answered the question about um, when it comes to do you collect your own stuff? Is there anything uh, that you wish you still had? Um Anyways, my follow-up question is in regards to before and everything after. Um, not only was the music cool, the album was cool, but also the belt buckle, the Pocanaja Punk belt buckle that you're wearing on the cover of that. Um, so when that album first came out, I had to have one of those belt buckles, but the band wasn't offering it as official merchandise yet. So somehow after some time, I found one on eBay and uh, contacted the guy and asked the guy how he got it. And for some reason, he admitted to me that he somehow had connections to the record label, which I believe was A&M at the time, or his brother or his friend or something. And he somehow acquired a box of that. Supposedly, the record label had made them as promotional items and had a bunch of them. And uh, so, long story short, I tried buying one from him. I actually did buy it, but this is back before you did everything electronically and you mailed your money to the eBay seller and he was trying to pull something shady and the only thing i could think about doing was contacting you guys directly which ended up being your mom who responded and she was kind of upset about it wanted all the information about the guy and i basically used this as a to hang over his head um to get him to do what he needed what i wanted him to do and uh long story short he didn't want me to give his information to your mom and he ended up sending me the belt buckle. Again, I, I don't know exactly how that happened, but then I, I still gave her the information, uh, the, the guy's information, like his eBay, eBay store name, his contact information. I think I even had his address. Um, but I don't know. Do you, do you remember anything about that? Uh, anything coming, you know, did anything come about uh, from that? Do you still have that original belt buckle? And do you know if the record label had promotional ones that they had made? versus the ones that you sold as merchandise. Um, just wanting to know. Thanks. Talk to you soon. Well, that guy, thanks for your call, Stones. Um, that guy's in jail today. He got, uh, 
He got uh, 75 to life, and he's never heard from him again. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, you know what's funny is, is not funny, but back in those days, so many leaks happened. And I remember specifically probably that record, before everything and after, um, was leaked early because the one of the kids from one of the executives at AM or at Universal or whatever the because AM was owned by Universal um one of the kids like was borrowing it and then all of a sudden it's online like it's just like how is this a thing you know how is this how does this get leaked and so you know but there was like promo CDs back then so sometimes people would take promo CDs and and before they could figure out how to not let people copy them, I guess. I mean, you can't get around bootlegging things. If you re if people really want to bootleg it, they will. Anyway, uh, yes, there were multiple copies of the belt buckle, the original album cover belt buckle, and I had one. The band, I mean, the band definitely has one or two just in, in the archive, and then I, I think I have one personally. I think all the guys got one, like Tom and Yuri, and I never sold, like nobody, none of us ever sold ours. Um, and then that is a different belt buckle than the belt buckle we ended up selling. So the belt buckle I'm talking about is the Poconecha Punk. It's on the cover of Before Everything and After, in case people are lost. Um, the one that we sold was a little bit smaller because the giant one was made too big to wear, really. It was made that big so it would look good on camera. So it was it was custom built. And so I I don't know, you know, I think I think this guy, you know, whoever made it, like it was like handmade. Um, that guy could have sold it on eBay or given it to uh, sold it to somebody that resold it on eBay or then somebody from A&M, you know, the prop department or what, I don't know what departments are there handling a random belt buckle for a cover. But um, it probably went through a &M, you know. It probably got leaked through there. It's uh, very interesting. And, and yeah, we tried to keep track of a lot of that stuff. And we do shut things down. We, we um, will send, send cease and desist sometimes. Um, you know, if there's like, lately I don't think we've been doing it, but like in the past... We've had to go and like uh, shut down people that had put up our album on, on YouTube, you know, like um, that kind of thing. You know, nowadays it's on YouTube no matter what. Like if you distribute an album through any digital distributor, such as like, well, CD Baby is kind of one of the middle of the road ones, um, but uh, TuneCore and, and, and all that. So there's, there's, there's like, um, nowadays, there's an automatic thing, and maybe you, you, you click a button, but there's an automatic thing where it goes to YouTube, dang, um, goes to YouTube, and we, we don't have any worry because it's all in there as far as publishing and, and all that, so if people play that, that's part of, of the, our deal, you know, it's, it's not somebody else bootlegging it, um, but... I mean, that's the thing. It's like with YouTube, some people make tons of money on YouTube. MXPX literally can't. I mean, we, we're, we've been shut down so many times. It's like crazy. Like, I think it's a Google thing because we've had different experiments and like we've been attacked by, um, f you know, like weird hacking foreign things. Not like because of MXPX at all, but because we just, you know, oh, they took our thing and did this weird thing and now Google thinks we did it. You know, that kind of stuff. Like, weird stuff has happened. But anyway, I'm digressing away from the original question. Back to the belt buckle. <laughs> the belt buckle, yes. I mean, you, you definitely have a legit belt buckle, I would assume. Um, especially since he was, like, so sketched out about it. But back in those days, things were a, almost like a bigger deal. Like... Like, oh, I got this leak. Now it's like, okay, I'm leaking this record. Nobody cares. Like, please, leak this record. Listen to my record for free. I don't care. Just listen to it. Like, you know, that's that's the, the situation these days. Um, let me get to the next question. 
But before I do that, let me just text my wife back real quick because she's um um hum 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 hum. Sorry, people that are listening on the on the podcast. This might or may or may not be edited out. Okay, cool. All right, we good. Um, sorry, you guys. This is a, a you know, it's a crazy day. It's a crazy week. It's been insane. I'm just been just working and working and working, and then on top of that, we're we're preparing for these shows coming up in November. Um, practice all of that. Gear. I got to suss out our gear again. It's just it never ends. It never ends, you guys. I love it. It's a great life. <laughs> it is. Uh, but it is insane. It is insane. Um, let's, get to, let's get to another voicemail. Here we go. Hey, what's up, Mike? This is Gabe from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Hey, man. Um, yeah, I was just curious. Uh, I'm a tour bus driver. Have been uh, Actually, I only pretty much listen to your podcast when I'm driving a bus. Uh, I don't know why that is. Uh, I guess it's just uh, the timing, but yeah, it makes it real convenient and easy. But uh, I'm just kind of curious that if you could tell some tour bus driver stories. Do you have any memories of specific drivers? Any uh, any weird characters or uh, any kind of uh, scary moments? Uh, I'd be happy to hear about the the bus drivers. Thanks, man. All right, Gabe. Say what up to Tulsa for me. Um, anyway, yeah, bus driving. I wonder, so what kind of bus you drive? You drive like a tour bus, like a rock tour bus, like a tourist people, or is it like, uh, well, I don't know, maybe call back, but, uh, yeah, lots of tour bus stories. Our very first, our very first, uh, bus driver, Jimmy, he used to drive for Cinderella was his main, like he'd driven for a bunch of those, like um acts you know rat and cinderella but like cinderella he spent a lot of time on the road with and he would just tell us tons of stories and said man they would just girls would just line up and just you know would hand him a condom and they'd jump on the bus and go into the back and you know it was just like candy it was like a like a like a vending machine you know he, he would just tell all these funny stories and and uh nothing crazy nothing all, all fun and games as far as what I've heard. Uh, but there was a story that he was saying he he, uh, he was on tour with uh, Def Leppard. And Def Leppard would, like, just have girls lined up, just give, giving the whole band blowies. Uh, I'll try to use a different word. Um, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, BJ's. Uh, and... It was just like the that was just how it was back in the eighties, back in those like hair metal days. I was like, okay, it was nothing like that for us. It, I mean, we had screaming fans and people that loved us for sure, but it was nothing like that for us. It, we were kids, we were literal kids, just going on tour, having a good time. But well, there were some fun parties. But uh, other bus drivers, uh, we had a, a one-legged bus driver missing one of his legs. Great guy, awesome driver, had a, an amazing bus, loved his bus. Um, we, we ran with him for a couple couple tours. Um, uh, what's his name, Marshall? Is his name Marshall? I'm just going to... Um, there was a bus driver out of Dallas um, that uh, I love, and I'm spacing on his name right now. I can remember his last name, which I won't say. Um People know him around the scene for sure, especially around Warp Tour. But he was a, a guy that I love him, and but still he would be crazy. Like one tour, he was trying to. He said he was fixing up our bus. He was like, "I'm putting a fridge in your bus or whatever." And and he was supposed to be meeting us in I don't know Philadelphia or Chicago or some name a city nowhere near Dallas. And but it was up in the Northeast area, and. Chicago would obviously be a lot closer. I don't think it was Chicago. I think it was on the East Coast. And he's like, yeah, I'll be there tomorrow. And we all fly in and we're like, okay, he's going to be here today. And then he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I got stuck behind a refrigerator. <laughs> I couldn't make it. I'm, I'm, I'm on the road now, though. 
you know, I'm halfway there. And, and we come to find out he was still calling from Dallas. And we're just like, oh, and, you know, we had to wait all night. And he got there, like, the next day, halfway through the day. And then we finally, you know, we went to the gig, you know, without the bus. And he, like, showed up the next day, you know, that kind of deal. The gig was in town, obviously. But um, we've broken down on buses time and time again. Um, our One of our bus drivers for a long time, his name is Josh. He used to play drums for for um what's that band i'm trying to space on their name right now um they're a band that was on tooth and nail and josh mixed um late great snowball fight of 2006 it's open war outside my door and i've got my bag of tricks and it's full of snowballs he mixed that song for us because he wasn't just a bus driver he was a musician and and uh Man, Ace Troubleshooter, that's the band. He was the drummer for Ace Troubleshooter, and he was our dr bus driver for years and years. He was great. He was a great driver, great guy. Still, I haven't talked to him in a, in a long time, but, but um, yeah, still, uh, uh, that reminds me, just, I'm going to write myself a note. Call Josh or text Josh. I don't even think I have his number anymore, but we'll see if he's got it. Um, shout out, Josh, if you're listening, call me, text me. I want to hear from you, buddy. Um, it's time for your reunion tour. <laughs> I kid, I kid. Um, let's do this. Uh, okay, one more thing, one more. We had a bus driver named Scott who um, passed away a few years after we worked with him. Not when we worked with him, luckily. Um, but he, he liked his alcohol, and he would drive all night, and then when he got to whatever city, he wanted to take a bottle and go to the hotel drink that bottle. And I had gotten this really nice bottle of, I want to say it was vodka. And it was a gift from someone and I, and it was brand new and it was up there in the, in the cupboard of the bus. And we were in Chicago. I remember this, it was Chicago Warp Tour and we're in a gravel parking lot. It's hot. We get done with the show. I'm like, it's time for a drink. Or, you know, get done with whatever we're doing for the day, right? Probably the show and signings and all that. Time for a drink. I go up to look for my vodka. It's gone. Like, what? How is my... I, like, literally never even opened it. And come to find out, Scott, our bus driver, took it. He's just like, I just needed a bottle. Oh, oh. I'm like, man, it's my brand. New. You know, like, he's like, I'll get you something. You know, and he, he bought me a bottle of tequila. I'm like... Did you just take this from somebody else? <laughs> I'll take it. It was a nice bottle of tequila. It was great. So that's Scott. That was a Scott. And uh, I've got a few, a few uh, other, now that I think about it, not safe for work stories that uh, maybe I'll save for, for, for the movie <laughs> or the book, something like that. All right, let's do one more call. And then, uh, and then that's it. Until next week, you guys. Thank you so much. Let's uh, let's hear from it. Hey, Mike. It's Seth from New Jersey. Done many things for you before in the past. I've done the uh, tour merch for your Panic Tour. Mm -hmm. I've done stickers for you guys. And I've been listening since 98. Me and my wife, well, my girlfriend at the time, my first show was, was in uh, New Jersey and a long time ago. But we've been listening to you ever since. And I just I was listening to Chick Magnet the other day and just wondering... Where did the inspiration for the um, the babble that you do during the song? You know the ba do do da ba do da do da do da bump bump ba da da do. Just wondering where that came from, and keep rocking, man. I, I just love lo love everything you're doing. Have a great one. Bye. Seth, what's up, man? Nice to hear from you. Thanks for calling, and thanks for all your help over the years. It's been a while, but uh, thank you. Glad to hear you you married your girlfriend and it's all working out. Thank you. That that's cool. I don't know why I'm thanking you for that. Uh, I just naturally say thank you. Um, that's a great question. That's why I want to thank you. I want to thank you for that question because it's something that I've never been asked and there is a decent story behind that. So that song was not a real song when I wrote it. It was a bass line and it was something that I would play when Tom broke a string. 
And I would just be do, 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 do. And it became Chick Magnet later. You know, when I got home, I wrote the full song. But the scat part, which is like a jazz word for nonsense singing, you know, but, but it's what jazz singers do a lot, you know, when they don't have words, but they want to vocalize or use their voice as an instrument. And so, excuse me, I'm, uh, I got, I burped. I guess I burped. Uh, <laughs> I forgot what I did. I forgot what it was, what it was called. Um, so, so what, what happened was I was in choir growing up, um, junior high, junior high, not, not high school, but junior high, I was in choir and that choir early on, like in like, um, I don't know, seventh, eighth, ninth. So I don't know what year it was, but one of those years we did a thing called, we did like a show, like a, our choir did like a Broadway style, Vegas style show where they're singing and choreography dancing. And um, Oklahoma was one of the songs we sang. Oklahoma where the sun keeps sweeping down the lane, something like that, where the waving wheat, Sure, so sweet. And the wind comes right behind the rain. So uh, there's things that you do over and over in your life. And when you're young, you have little flashes of those things. Like I don't remember the whole Oklahoma song. I barely remember just the hook right there. But um, there's other songs in there. There's a rink-a-dink-a-doo, a rink-a-dink-a-dee that this uh, a classmate of mine sang the part of Groucho Marx. And his name was Robert. Uh, great guy, and he sang in a Groucho Marx voice, and I was just, I, I thought that was cool. I was like, he's given that, he, he's kind of like putting himself out there as far as like being a kid in a class and giving those vibes, giving those like actor vibes. So that's kind of what, what I took away from that experience in my life was, the performance, you know, you have to give it, give it your all and not feel dumb. Um, we were doing some weird songs, you know, like, uh, celebrate, celebrate, dance to the music, oh yeah, like, and we're doing these, I mean, I'm just like, if you could find a tape of that, I would be embarrassed, I'm sure. So there was a part where there was a scat part in one of the songs, and it was not my part. I think it might have been like a Groucho Marx song, you know, the rink a dink a doo or something like that. And some, for some reason, that just stuck with me and it popped into my head right at the right time when I was writing Chick Magnet and I needed a bridge part, a breakout part, something different. And I just came up with that. And some of those words were directly just like, okay, but, but do, do we... You can say dwee, you can say do. That's all like jazz words, right? That's it. Thanks for your call. Sorry, my microphone's freaking out. All right, that worked. There we go. Got it. <laughs> uh, yes. Hey, this is not a perfect world we live in. This podcast is meant to just be... Uh, you know, fun. So these things happen. These, these little things happen. So anyway, that's a great question, Seth. Thank you for, for asking. So yes, I, I, I was inspired by my early days in choir and I just remembered this like scatting thing. And so I kind of like added my own into it and, and made it work with, with chick magnet. Do, 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 do. So it's like, uh, I mean, that's, yeah, so funny. So something that like no punk band had ever done that I had known of. So like I wasn't doing it because no punk band had done it. I was doing it because it popped into my head. And that's, that's how I come up with songs. It's literally how I write is I sit down. Or maybe I'm not sitting down, maybe I'm doing something else and something pops into my head. But, but I'm sitting down in process of trying to think of what to do next and things just, maybe they come from the ether. In this case, not the ether, actually from my subconscious and my childhood, somewhere back there or all these memories 
that we all have as humans that steer us in subconscious directions in our lives. And, and it happens in more than just songwriting. It happens in all aspects of life. <sighs> something to remember, something to think about, and uh, something to call in about. If you have any other questions, any other any uh, experiences you've had, I'd love to hear about it. And um, you can call me, 360-830-6660. Shout out to Bob McKnight for producing and editing the podcast and uh, being just the general comic relief. I appreciate it, Bob. All right, you guys, till next week um, for the podcast. But, of course, if, uh, if you want to get some vinyl, that's going to be happening this Friday, 10 a.m., PST, mxpeaks.com. We're so excited. We hope, uh, we hope we get a lot of orders. We have a ton of vinyl, so don't worry. I don't think it's going to run out. We might run out of, like, one of them or something, but uh, we have a ton. So please come get it and... Uh, I say that now, don't I? I say that now. Don't listen to me. If you're worried, just go get it Friday. But uh, if you're not worried, don't be worried. We're going to be fine. Um, MXPX is going to be playing with Teenage Bottle Rocket November 18th and 19th, Chicago and Milwaukee. Tickets, mxpx.com, of course. Um, please go check out our new song, our new cover song, Un Unstoppable. The video is on our YouTube. Check it out because you might be in one of the cities. We, we put... We packed in so many cities, and I know there's more cities that exist that didn't make it. So we'll have, you know, we'll have more footage for the next city, right? Uh, for the next video. But uh, that's it, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>